On this week's Adobe Tuesday tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Parametric EQ. Hi, I'm David, talking tech and audio. If you're enjoying these videos, why don't you give me a like? It really does help me and the channel out. So this week on our Tuesday tutorial, I'm showing you how to use EQ, and in particular, the Parametric EQ in Adobe Audition. If you're working on podcasts using any kind of voice talent, it's terribly important you learn how to EQ to pull out the best elements of any of the voices that you're using. There are various different ways that you can EQ in Audition, but Parametric is my favorite, and I'm gonna show you all about it this week. Before I show you how to use Parametric EQ, just to let you know, you can either use it in the waveform editor, as we have here, or if you're in multi-track, you can certainly use it there too, and it would just be in two, filter and EQ, and pick out the Parametric Equalizer there. I'm gonna work in the waveform view for this video. The two ways you can open it, you can go to effects, pick out there from filter EQ and parametric, or of course you can go into the effects rack, which is what I tend to do normally, and pick up parametric EQ there. If I just reset it, and let's have a look. Well, first of all, you have got a number of presets there, which are always useful, some of which are quite good if you want to use those. This is a gain, which literally does what you'd expect it to do. It makes things quieter or louder. At the bottom, the Q width here, you can either look at the Q width, which is really important, one of the big benefits of the parametric EQ, as you'll see shortly. I tend to leave it set the Q width, but if you want to work in a Hertz range, you can do that too. Ultra quiet, don't have any reason to use that. It's quite processor heavy, but it's there if you want to use it. And the decibel range you're working in on this scale here, you can have set to either 96 decibels, or I prefer to tend to work in the 30 decibel range. Let me just put my headphones on so I can hear the audio. If we come in here now, hi, I'm David from Talking Tech and Audio. We can set a shelf at either end, and to enable a shelf, you would simply click on here and then decide where you want it to begin to work and raise the decibels. You can change the shape of the shelf as well, so you've got a very subtle shelf or a slightly more aggressive shelf, depending on what your need is. This is particularly useful at the other end if you want to add sparkle to your voice. So if I just bring this over, set myself up a shelf and let you hear what happens. Hi, I'm David from TalkingTechAndAudio.com and in this video I am showing you how to set up and use the parametric EQ inside. As you can hear, added a nice bit of sparkle at the top end of my voice. So shelves are very useful. The high pass, that's really useful, for particularly on voices. Best way to describe to use it is simply roll it on until the voice sounds too thin and then bring it back on. Uh, it's a way of getting rid of any unnecessary rumble at the bottom end and also room noise, potentially like uh, air conditioning units. You'll hear how this works. Hi, I'm David from TalkingTechAndAudio.com and in this video, I am showing way you thin. how to set up and use the parametric EQ inside of a dope. So I've rolled off any bass and muddiness down there by using the high pass filter. And then on to the real part of parametric EQ. Now this is the important part to set up. We talked about the Q width here. If I just set the, very, the Q to a very narrow Q tip of 20, so we're looking at very specific frequencies. I'm then gonna raise the decibels up, say by 15 decibels, and then sweep through. Find out where there are any problem, uh, problematical ranges of frequencies that you want to get rid of. Let's have a little listen. Hi, I'm David from TalkingTechAndAudio.com and in this video I am sure... So you could argue it sounds slightly boxy there. And if you wanted then to get rid of those frequencies, you simply bring it down. You can obviously punch in there and go to an exact frequency, minus five decibels, and you can be very, very specific with that Q set at such a narrow range, you're just working on very specific frequencies. Of course, if you wanted to work on wider frequencies around that range, you can just open that up so you're scooping out a whole range of frequencies either side. And you'll see then, if I raise that back up again, how much wider that is. You're working on frequencies, much a much broader range of frequencies either side of your designated point. Depends which way you need to work. I tend to leave it fairly narrow because I'm going to work on very specific frequencies. So then you would find a frequency that you think is a little boxy, not sounding too good, and just knock those frequencies out. And that is simply what you do throughout the whole range. And don't forget, you could even use the parametric EQ as a de-esser. Let's say you know that your sibilance is around about 6,500 hertz, so you'd have the range set there, I'd set the Q to, and it very much on DS and you'd want it as a narrow, not necessarily as narrow as 20, but you'd find the areas of sibilance. And so if we just take this up. Hi, I'm David from TalkingTechAndAudio.com and in this video, I am showing you how to set up and use, broadly speaking, it looks like my sibilance is around about there. And you could then decide that you want to reduce your sibilance by using the parametric EQ. It's the 
best way I found of setting EQ on a voice by far in Adobe Audition. There are other methods of doing it as well. There's uh, various other equalizers in Audition, but this parametric EQ is by far the best and the most accurate. You can obviously save these as presets. So if you particularly like the settings you've made here, you could save that setting, give it a name of any kind, okay that. And then the settings you've got here would be saved so you could come back and use any time in the future. But that's how you use parametric EQ in Adobe Audition. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And most importantly, let me know how you're using parametric EQ in your projects. If you've enjoyed this video, stick around. At the end, I'm going to leave a link where you can learn how to use auto ducking in the essential sound panel. Thank you ever so much for joining me this week and I will catch you on the next one.